An abandoned castle is a common place for a group of intrepid adventurers to explore. The riches and magical secrets of peoples lost to time are ripe for the taking for the brave and the foolish. An adventurer may be lucky enough to walk away with both treasure and their lives when they explore places such as Dargard Keep, if the gods be merciful. But the mercy of gods is not found in Dargard. This place is forsaken. Cursed. Not a fortress or honorable keep anymore, but a tomb. One where the dead do not rest. Gargoyles and once proud banners crumble and fade. Entombed heroes of the past are missing, desecrated by treasure hunters and necromancers alike. Zombies shuffle about aimlessly through the dead gardens. Skeletons carrying rusted blades patrol the decrepit halls, and ghosts wail their melancholy into the night. To any veteran adventurer, the odd shambling corpse or forlorn spirit is no threat compared to what lies ahead. You can feel it in the air. The cold. The bitterness. The fear. It bleeds into your very bones like poison, making your body shiver and your breath shallow. You pray for salvation, ignorant of the fact that no gods can hear you in this cursed keep. You hear the familiar sound of an armored warrior on horseback come from the great hall, and you turn to see a true terror. Stride atop an ebony black steed with fiery hooves, there is a tall, skeletal figure, clad in black plate armor. Grasping a longsword in its bony hands, the blade hums with necrotic magic, just as sharp as the day it was forged. Two glowing red orbs of malice glare out at you from behind the Dark Knight's helmet as the terrifying black steed snorts flame. This is the ruler of Fort Dargard, the first knight of the Black Rose and the Doom of Solamnia, Lord Soth. Of the countless types of undead, few are as infamous or dangerous as Death Knights. When a paladin falls from grace, commits a terrible act of evil, or offends their god, they are punished with undeath and suffused with dark powers, their righteousness replaced with hatred, their drive for justice supplanted with a desire to kill. They retain most of their memories, now trapped in a twisted undead body and warped personality. Yet all of their skills and strengths as knights and warriors and divine spellcasters remain turn to wickedness. It takes a truly great power to turn the corpse of a paladin into a death knight, but the act that leaves their souls open to this corruption can be both simple and numerous. Such is the case with Lord Soth. In life, Lord Soth was a member of the Knights of Solamnia, a chivalric order dedicated to purging evil wherever they could find it. So great was his skill and so legendary his heroism that Soth ascended to become a Knight of the Rose, the highest honor that his order could bestow. He took Dargard Keep, he took an agreeable wife, and lived the life that was expected of him. One day, Lord Soth and the knights under his command were traveling back home from a campaign. While on the road, they encountered a group of elven priestesses under attack from savage ogres. Though weary from travel, Lord Soth and his knights cut down the ogres, saving the elves and offering them safe passage on their shared road. When the Lord of Dargard Keep laid his eyes upon Isolde Denisa, the fairest of the elven priestesses, he fell in love. He managed to seduce Isolde and return to Dargard Keep with her. He told everyone, including his wife, that Isolde was nothing more than a dear friend and a new healer in the keep. The young lord spent much of his time with his old, which did not go unnoticed by the knight's wife, Kareen. Kareen desperately wished to have a child, but could not draw her husband's gaze away from his elf friend. In her desperation, Kareen sought out a witch. The witch agreed to give Kareen a child, but warned that this child would be a representation of her husband's very soul. Months later, Kareen gave birth to an abomination. It had twisted horns, cloven hooves, a third eye, matted black fur, and a serpent's tongue. Soth was so horrified, 
convinced that his wife had consorted with some kind of demon, and so he slew them both. Before the knight could find a way to make this a secret, he was taken to the court of high justice. His wife's lady-in-waiting had reported on Soth's affair with his old. The she-elf had become pregnant, and of course his true wife was now missing. Soth's lies about his affair with his old and his wife's disappearance were soon brought to light, but before he could be executed, the Knight of the Rose escaped back to his keep. It was not long before the other knights of the realm of Salamnia laid siege to Dargard Keep, intent on dragging Lord Soth out to face justice for his crimes. The siege lasted for months, and Soth's mood turned black. So dark was his mind that in time he even struck his beloved Isolde, whom he had taken as his new wife. This act was enough for the knight to realize what he had become. Lord Soth prayed to his human gods, but was met with only silence. His wife, on the other hand, prayed to Mishakul, the elven goddess of healing and restoration. It is said she could bring healing to both the body and the soul. Mishakul sent Isolde a vision of the future. A rival nation would soon invade Soth's homeland of Salamnia. This enemy would crush them and turn them all into slaves. This cataclysm could only be stopped if Lord Soth were to fight against the enemy, but the goddess warned that if he chose this path, he would certainly die. Isolde told her husband of her visions, and Soth saw his path to redemption, and so he marched to war with the same knights that just months before had laid siege to his own home. On his journey to the front lines, Lord Soth was set upon by three mysterious elf maidens. They poisoned his mind with lies about his wife's infidelity. If Isolde could be convinced into an affair with him all those years ago, then surely another could seduce her away from him. After all, the elf goddess foretold his death, and she was pregnant. Why wouldn't she seek to escape the fate of a widowed mother? With his mind clouded by rage and jealousy, the Lord of Dargard Keep abandoned his quest for redemption and confronted Isolde just as the cataclysm began. The invading armies outnumbered the Knights of Salamnia ten to one, crushing the defenders. They assaulted Soth's Keep, and in the chaos a chandelier fell on Isolde and her son, setting the elf priestess aflame. She begged for her husband to save their son, he did not, for he did not believe the child was his. As her life ended, Isolde cursed her husband. You shall live the lifetime of every soul you have caused death today. As this curse was spoken, the flames engulfed Dargard Keep, slaying Lord Soth, his retainers, and any who dwelt within. But the souls of those who died that day found no peace. His retainers still wander the ruins of the keep as skeletal soldiers, as loyal in death as they were in life. Lord Soth now sits upon a rusty iron throne, his armor charred black from the fires, the centuries of combat against would-be treasure hunters and Soth slayers worn away his old sigils of kingfishers and roses leaving only a charred black rose in their place. His cursed blade drips with the blood of his victims, and is always at his side. All thoughts of honor and redemption have long since passed from his undead mind. He no longer brings justice or honor to anyone, only death and terror. The first of the Death Knights of Dargard. The first knight of the Black Rose. Thank you so much for watching, you guys. With the Dragonlance book coming out, it got me really excited to talk about one of my favorite characters, Lord Soth. We will talk more about him in the future, because this guy went on several adventures after he became undead. He even went to Ravenloft and made war with Strahd von Zarevich. But that's for another video. Now for those of you who are wondering, what about your dragon videos? I am still making those. Currently I'm working on the Copper Dragon lore and ecology videos, so keep an eye out for those. They will be out sometime of January next year. If you enjoy this kind of content, then please hit that subscribe button as it helps me out immensely. 
Also, leave a comment. I love hearing from you guys, and I love to respond to them. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.